Hey, what's up, everybody? It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Just Red Bull right now. Hope you're doing good. This is our tropical update here on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we're going to talk about what's coming next week. We still have tropics. Season is not officially over till uh, the end of November. We do have a whole bunch of stuff out there. As a matter of fact, look at this real quick. Um, we have Martine way up here. Not even on the map. It's so far north. Uh, Lisa's weakened a bunch. Is this going to be maybe a depression in the bay, and it's come back down to Mich uh, Michigan, <laughs> in uh, Mexico. Uh, we got a little dot here by Bermuda that's going to get absorbed probably by this big old mess that we're going to be talking about right now. So this big circle right here is what we've been talking about for a while. It's some energy coming up, merging with some energy to the north. It's going to uh, be really complex. Uh, right now nothing to stress about as far as winds go yet i mean there's really nothing showing anything broad lows take a while to develop so you know that's a good thing but as far as uh, other things we got to think about um we got some uh, potential f for some big rain storms some coastal effects uh so let me show you the latest and greatest here um this is the latest models on tropicaltidbits.com Good consistency with all four of our big models of the Euro, CMC, GFS, and Icon all showing a low pressure area. Um, the, the trend has been continuing a little bit more east or west. <laughs> and then uh, eventually there's a front coming down next week that's going to be uh, pulling this up, bringing a lot of wind shear, helping um, you know keep this thing from developing anymore. But the, the, the core of the system is trending a little bit more through the state of Florida uh, doesn't change anything subtropical system I'm gonna show you here in a second uh, if it is a subtropical system a big wide system uh, no matter where the center actually officially is we're gonna see effects well uh, displaced from the center and this is where the east coast of Florida st. John's Jacksonville needs to watch even uh, Brunswick Savannah South Carolina even we're gonna have a lot of Atlantic winds to, to watch but as far as the big four go, they, they're keeping it, you know, maybe tropical storm range. I mean, 1,000 millibar isn't, isn't too bad. Here's your latest ensembles from the Euro this afternoon. You can see, you know, high confidence. There's going to be a high pressure building to the north. This is next uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, next week. And, you know, some of them have it going to golf. And most of them kind of either fizzle it out or shoot back to the northeast. Um, not seeing any concern for anybody to worry about in the Gulf yet, so don't worry about seeing these little lines. This is these are just your center points on where the low is going to be. And if you notice, green is thousand millibar plus, only one or two blue, meaning uh, stronger than that. So so far, models are keeping it kind of weak. Um, however, looking at Bay News Nine here, water temperatures are still 82, 83 degrees. You know, 80 degrees is that magic number. Uh, tropical systems like 80 degrees plus. And there is still quite a bit of ocean heat content here around the Caribbean, uh, around the Bahamas. So this thing, you know, it's going to have a little bit of warm water to work with. Uh, that's why November is still time to watch tropics. Uh, let's look at tropicaltidbits.com here. You can kind of show you what a broad system looks like. So... So here's our setup. This is Monday. We're starting to see our low pressure here, very broad. But watch all this right here. This is the slingshot we keep kind of talking about. Uh, moisture just kind of shoving itself around the top side. And here's your latest GFS. Just continual flow of moisture here. Now this is, you know, this is uh, Monday into Tuesday into Wednesday. So we can have two or three days of this constant uh, wide reaching uh, storms and rains, you know, impacting the East Coast, uh, North Carolina, down into Florida, uh, no matter where this low pressure sets up. So that's something to watch. Um, that's the latest GFS, latest European, almost the exact same setup here, low pressure. All this juice here gets rotated around, almost like a subtropical system. Uh, and it, you know, brings in a lot of heavy moisture into the Carolinas, Georgia, down into Florida. Canadian model doing almost the exact same setup. Uh, a little bit stronger in the Canadian, not much, but it's keeping that low pressure down in South Florida. But look at all this moisture on the top side. So all this right here funneling in. And, there, you know, we got the warm Gulf Stream. You know, tropics can be tricky.
down there in the Gulf Stream. You know, the water's a little warmer there. So NAC's got it marked at 30% right now. You know, anything in that car or, or Bahamas um, southwest part of the Atlantic, you know, you just got to watch close. But so, but as far as consistency goes, 1,000 millibar, you know, we, we're going to have some storms. They're going to be rolling in. This is through the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, next week. Uh, even the Icon showing a similar setup here with a uh, week low with a lot of moisture on the top side. Wind shear for next week, uh, I've been kind of looking at this. It's not the best. There is going to be wind shear uh, coming in on the north side. So it might not have the, the most ideal conditions, but there is there are some signs that it could be lightening up a little bit, giving this a little window to develop. Um, shear, I have found, is really hard to predict um, long range. Um, but here, here, here's the big story that might not be talked about enough. So Hurricane Ian passed through the state of Florida, and uh, Hurricane Ian brought in a lot of um, trouble to Volusia County northward, a lot of surge a lot of beach erosion a lot of the areas haven't recovered yet uh, high tide is making it all the way to the seawall as it is now there's also some condominiums condemned so yeah there's 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 uh lingering effects currently so what we're seeing here this is sunday this weekend we still got a line of uh of winds coming in so we're gonna have a prolonged wind event here through the week this is sunday this weekend Things really start to pick up Monday. Uh, you can see these are the, the directional arrows as the uh, wind gusts. But you can just see this constant battering. And uh, Tuesday night here, this is Monday night actually. Monday night we're starting to see uh, upwards of uh, 35 plus you know, gusts. Uh, uh, we're seeing sustained winds possibly here 25, 35. That's close to tropical storm force winds, but that persistent winds is what uh, you don't want to see along the east coast of Florida. And uh, as we get into Tuesday, you know, we're starting to see more again. So there's a lot a lot of questions as far as um, how this setup is going to play out. Just, uh, you know, that's something to watch. We're going to see this thing gets a little stronger. We're going to have more winds coming in. Here's the GFS, you know, showing some pretty strong winds in the northern part of Florida. So St. John's is definitely watching St. John's River. They, they're you know still dealing with a lot of flooding up that way so any water that pushes in around jacksonville could have some trouble for the st john's we are going to also be in a new moon on tuesday night into wednesday that's the full moon and that usually that ups the tide values a lot so you add that with this we could have a little bit of beach erosion problem here on the east coast uh to areas that are already dealing with seawall failures so we'll keep an eye on it like i said nothing's showing up too strong to stress about rains for sure you know tuesday wednesday thursday squall lines everything normal you know it's hot out there we've had record heat here in florida thunderstorms today so there's going to be a lot of fuel in the atmosphere for this thing to to um produce some stronger storms uh that we you know normally see with with feeder bands you know rotating in and like i said that gulf stream is warm and we could see some surprise storms all the way down in south florida um as this thing makes its way up so there you go i'm on it I, i'm watching like a hawk so We'll be live tomorrow, Friday morning at 9, 19 Eastern. And we'll see what the overnight models say. If there's any changes, I'll let you know. All right, have a great night. Bye.